The audio to this episode was lost, unfortunately, so we had to make do with one of the camera's built-in audio and enhance it as much as we could, but the episode is such a good one, we wanted to keep it, so without further ado... Welcome back to the COS Business Podcast, number one podcast in Colorado Springs. Today, our hardware is sponsor is none other than our guest that is sitting here today, uh, Fast Science. Fast Science was an amazing company. Two locations here in Colorado Springs, too. Mr. Pete Cassera, thank you so much for joining us, owner of Fast Science, both locations, and then also owner of Cars Helping Charities as well. Yes, Two times sponsored. Thank you so much for joining us, man. I really appreciate not only you being on the show, but like sponsoring us and helping us get to the next level as a podcast here in Colorado Springs, man. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, our, our, our sponsors really help us elevate. They help us like keep the show going. Not only that, but like help us stay to recruit for more additional things because everything you need, Marcus, don't take any profit out of this thing. You put everything back into the shit. Um, so there's there's a big aspect um, to, to the sponsor you're really helping us uh, grow the show. So we, we appreciate you. Bro. And every, every other sponsor as well, too. Awesome, man. Well, t- let's break everything down. Um, we talked a little bit before the show, before the recording. Where are you from? What brought you to Colorado Springs? Just start there. That on this time you got us. <laughs> uh, I grew up in Rochester, New York, way upstate. Um, went there, you know, through high school. And I then I went to college, my undergrad in Syracuse University. Um, and then lived in Rochester for a couple of years until I chased my girlfriend to New York City. Um, lived there for a couple of years before going back to business school and ended up back to upstate New York. Um, after, after business school, we were kind of looking for a new place to live and Colorado was in perfect. So he came out to the Lutee. That's awesome, bro. And then like, so I lived in Rochester, New York too. We we're just talking about this. Talk a little bit about like the landscape difference. Like, like traditional folks think of New York, New York city, big high rises. Talk a little bit about Rochester. Yeah, New York. New- Rochester is, is green. It's, uh, there's grass everywhere. There's space between the houses. and there's big backyards. It's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. It's like a beautiful part of the country. Um, absolutely brutal in the winter time. It's six, six months of, gray and dark and snow um but six months it's it's mid uh so pretty one of the most beautiful falls i've ever seen in my sure. entire life right like full foliage of like everything sure. and like sailboats too right because it has like yeah it's yeah the finger lakes there we spent a lot of time there it's great yeah it's awesome i was telling pete before the show started like that was like a, i moved around a lot as a kid i was like a military kid almost and my mom being the executive in the newspaper industry that was the most homely we've ever lived anywhere as far as like the the all me type of environment from the Italian folks that lived in upstate New York and just like how gracious everybody was to like cook dinners and have us over and do block parties and like have a sense of community in such a spot that was just like you would not think that if you just didn't know that part of the country. So I think it's so close to Ellis Island and so so close to the immigrants coming in. Uh you know, my family moved just upstate from there and I think you have these super deep family ties and you're right. It's in so deep the people. And you're of Italian descent too, so that your folks were Italians yeah. from yeah. Italy. Partially, partially, yeah. That's awesome. We were just in Italy last May, so gosh, 2023. Wow. And that is awesome. So I don't know if you've been back or you've been over. Oh, oh. Been. it's like me as Mexico. I'm Mexican and been Mexico, but it is such an awesome place, man. And like the first thing we noticed right away was that like when you sit down to eat, it's like a four to five hour right. endeavor, and that's okay. It's just. Right. United States is so like hustle and bustle that yeah. it's just interesting. And it's just, I love the culture of the Italian cultures that very well received when we moved over there. I'm pretty sure my friends thought I was Italian and I was like they third go. grade moving in there. there. So <laughs> oh, there's a lot of, a lot of those not just true. Yeah. Well, so you move over, you said to Colorado, that's yeah. a whole big difference in comparison to anywhere in New York. Right. So you land here. What else happens after that? So we we had moved away from New York City um, right before I went to business school. So we had a tiny little condo on street parking, you know, uh, super tight quarters. And we wanted to do kind of the suburban thing. So we moved as far south as we could. What we thought is we were on the edge of everything to Castle Rock. And uh, a couple of years later, you know, everything expanded so much. So we kept leaping south and ended up at large for finally. Oh, it's awesome. Was, I freaking love Larks. We man, he's, yeah. What draw? So we we're talking about this too briefly. Like, there's some activities that you like that like draws you to Colorado, yeah. too, right? So, like, yeah. what do you like to do in your free time? No, I love fly fishing here. That's that's definitely number one. Um, Stun of time in the water, like in the spring, the mountains, the sunshine. It's the best all year round. 
bus. Yeah. I got to get into that a little bit because I think yeah. I really enjoy it. I've never done it to court. Uh, but yeah, this sounds like it's something I would, would like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's cool. It was a good learning experience for me. My uh, my father-in-law came. He really wanted to go fishing. He kind of pushed me. Hang up. Let's go fishing every week. Once a week, let's go. And we sucked. For, for, for ten, yeah. th- 10 times we didn't catch a single fish. We were awful. Um, you know, it just takes time. It's one of those things. But, you know, once once you get the hang of it and uh, you get good, you start catching fish. But, but even even if you don't, it's, it's, it's great to just stand mm-hmm. in this and you be out there. It's one of those things where you have to think through a lot of things, like how you line your, your pole, yeah. what kind of bait you use, depending on what's in the water. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of meticulous, and it kind of, it's like one of those things like woodworking and any of those skills that kind of take away all the worries of the world because you have to focus on the, those first parts, right? Yeah. yeah. And then you're sitting there and you're waiting, right? Yeah. And fly fishing is a little bit more active, I guess. Yeah. But it's a uh, it's a sport that like it just kind of pulls your attention away from like all the problems of the world. So I'm sure it's very therapeutic for you, probably as well. It was. It was great. On the water, no cell phone reception. You're out there for eight hours. Where is the bus? Yeah, do you love mountains too? Because I mean, obviously, Colorado, right? We have a lot of mountains here in comparison to like New York, upstate New York, right? Yeah. Oh, like hills, yeah. but not mountains. We pair it down almost everywhere. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everything outside, man. We we love our camps and we're in Michigan, Alabama. That's awesome, man. Is, it, is that something you grew up doing up there in New York? Or? Not really. You, you son, like we just spent a lot of time in the water and lakes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, do more like water, you know, ski, wakeboarding, things like that. But, um, so this definitely went different here. Yeah, it's it's cool. We went up and uh, we used to fish in the Great Lakes. Yeah, up there in upstate New York, when I was like fishing in. Yeah, I didn't even think about the Great Lakes so close to that area. You know, it didn't connect to New York. Yeah, maybe it's a cool spot because it's like so close to Buffalo, and then like obviously all that's really close to Niagara Falls. So yeah, we go to we used to go to Niagara Falls all the time, and I mean Niagara really? Falls. So and the other side of that is Toronto, right, Canada, yeah. and. Mm-hmm. So we just go over there too, and just hang out there for the day or whatever it might be. And it was just like such a different. It's like a whole other life in comparison to Colorado, right? We're really landlocked. It's just different. But, like, I, you fall in love with it in different ways. Yeah. And that's why I was trying to gauge, like, the differences in, like, everything there. And coming to Colorado, I mean, there's a lot of stark differences. I, mean, I didn't know if there was, like, a culture shock for you. I know Andrew, he moved here to mountains, and maybe there wasn't a culture shock. I think people fall in love with the mountains. Close to, to Missouri and Kansas City. Like, but there's, like, there's a difference between bugs and, and humanity. Right? <laughs> yes. About it, yeah. I think. Uh, and mats too, obviously. <laughs> and w- without without bugs and, and humidity, it's a lot funner to hike. You know, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, <laughs> you got more elevation there too. Yeah, <laughs> I think Colorado is pretty self selected People live here for a reason. They mm-hmm. they love being outside for the humans like things. So it's it's not a lot of life minded people. It's cool. What does it do for you specifically? Your guy. We'll talk more about like how you got into business and everything too. But like, what does it? Obviously, we know like it pulls your attention away from stress you know, life and being a business owner like and we'll get a little bit more into that too like how that takes a toll on you yeah but what else does nature pull yeah pull i mean, i think it's it's just the ability to unplug it's the ability to be being awe out outside you know be yes. something different than than sit sitting inside calming mayor here um totally a reset of, of all all that stress all that uh you know responsibilities yeah, amen to that, man. I, that's why we love living here too. Yeah. And there's so many folks in Colorado Springs or the greater area that's like they're transplants, man. They yeah. fall in love with that, that mountain or mountains, and it's, it's just a draw. Yeah, the beauty just takes you in and makes you want to stay. For like, I came here like visiting, technically visiting partially, and but hey, it's a different story. But like, it made me want to stay. But I don't know if you had a similar experience. Yeah, 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 we did. Yeah, actually, I, I came here as a an inter. Yeah. <laughs> from business school, we what? we thought we wanted to live here. So I came here as an intern. I remember we, I mean, we literally were driving. And my wife and I just said, "Wherefore this is this is where I want to live." <laughs> yeah, I think it was coming into Castle Rock. Like, oh, that's hilarious! You know, the sunset and the mountains. So, so beautiful. Like, yeah, I never seen it. We're going to take a quick break and thank our sponsors. Pinnacle, Pinnacle Advanced, Advanced Primary, Primary Care. Care. Skip the healthcare hassle with Pinnacle Advanced Primary Care. Direct primary care for a simple monthly fee, putting health first. No insurance needed. Experience personalized care that's as unique as every individual. Visit PinnacleAPC.com to learn more. That's PinnacleAPC.com. Franchise, franchise Succeed. Succeed. Grow any business with Franchise Succeed. From development to expansion, turning small businesses into national brands through franchising. Start scaling up with a free consultation at FranchiseSucceed.com today. That's FranchiseSucceed. 
Dot com. Planet, Planet Duct. Duct. Breathe easier with Planet Duct, Colorado Springs' premier air duct cleaning service. Powerful vacuum trucks rid homes of allergens and dust. Clear the air by visiting planetduct.com. Mm-hmm. That's planetduct.com. Dot com. Epic, Epic eyewear. eyewear. Elevate style with Epic Eyewear. Innovative designs meet unmatched quality, ensuring a great look and better vision. Discover your next pair of shades at epiceyewear.com. That's epiceyewear.com, spelled E P O C H eyewear.com and we're running a special discount right now andrew it's cosbp15 for 15 percent off your 15 percent off your freaking order at epic eyewear.com we're in the sunglasses right now if you're watching listening on the audio de- definitely check out the video so you can see and check out how epic they are e-p-o-c-h eyewear.com mm-hmm. eyewear.com now we will get back to this episode have you moved there like because casserock I mean probably past 10 15 years has really exploded it was just mm-hmm. a small town yeah Blip on the rate, like on the radar, on the way to Colorado Springs yeah. and all that, and like it's just blown up so much. Just being between both those big cities, it's such a cool spot. Because like speaking of outside, like it's got like mountain bike trails yeah. and it's like just so much cool stuff going on over there. Yeah. So I can see why you guys. And so your wife is outdoorsy, just like you. Yeah, so it's kind of a match made in heaven for you two. I, right. That's awesome. So tell us a little bit more internship. Okay, so what when you came over here? What were you doing? And then what got you into? being a business owner of yourself. So I, uh, let me see, sorry, I was in business school in, in Ithaca and, um, we kind of, we thought we were going to live in New York city cause that's where we were. And, you know, the first couple of weeks of business school, these companies start alling and started recruiting us as students, but it was, you know, Google and Amazon. And it's, well, Hey, maybe we, maybe you should go to the West coast or you should try something different. And, so we were kind of looking around to see where we wanted to live. So we we tried a bunch of different cities and then a long trip and I liked out, you know, San Diego, Portland, San Francisco, Silicon Valley, all that stuff. The te- Seattle. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, we really, and we loved all of them, you know, different. You know, obviously really cool parts. So, um, and then we came to Denver. Yeah, we kind of saw it loved and decided to want to stay here. So, so yeah, I reached out to Dish and said, hey, I'd like to work for you. I, I need an intern for you for the summer and said he did that. So you started with Dish Network, which is, I think, used to be the wealthiest man who owns Dish. Yes, in the movie. Movie. yes, yes, sir. And yeah. so he lived. I think he lived in Littleton. I don't. I don't he does. He yeah. Know that. Okay. So like, he was like the wealthiest person. I think he still might be the wealthiest person. Car. I mean, pretty wealthy, right? Yeah. On Dish Network. Yeah. Um, but was it Instagram? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's a little older, but yeah. Why not? Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 kind of cool. That 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 was the crux that brought you over here. And so tell us a little bit more about that and like that experience as well. Sure. So I kind of had changed careers to go to business school. I, um, I'm a, you know, classically trained in finance, so finance undergrad and MBA. So, uh, like I'm happiest in a pounded way at spreadsheet and a building model and stuff. So, uh, yeah, so I went to work for Dish in their corporate finance suite and spent time at Sling to their death, their, uh, operate over the air offering. Um, and hated it. I hated it, like wearing a suit every day and working through someone else and working through, you know, 80 hours a week and missing dinner and all that. And, uh, yeah, the, at some point I got to this place where I, you know, I worked with the CFO once in a while. And I remember say, I remember he smoked sitting in his office and thinking, Oh, like my track is this. And I, I don't want this job. Like I, I don't want it to be bad. I was so, uh, they had to die for, I think four years and then so for lesson. Why were you saying like you're looking at like your future potentially, right? CFO sitting across from you or working yep. right next to you. What was that moment like you talked a little bit about it, but like what was like glaringly there for you to be like, I don't want this part of my life yeah, at, at all. I think just like the work life balance, um and him having his hands tied away. Because it he still even as the highest kind of finance guy, I believe be still reporting to someone else and how do you want to do my own game? Yeah, being a prisoner to some group, like another person essentially, right? It's the traditional employee yeah. type of breakthrough for a lot of entrepreneurs who would have that. Did you have that spirit of entrepreneurship before then? Like did it make little like glimpses before that? Yeah, I did I did something but never you know, never a full time full time big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It usually pops up a little bit, right? Yeah. It's interesting. It's definitely a symptom. If if I had yeah. that chili of you not wanting to work for others is a symptom of, I guess, symptoms of uh, snake and ground cases. But, <laughs> but it definitely is a sign of 
entrepreneurship. I yeah. You could do. Yeah. Which and, is what this podcast is all about. Right. <laughs> Road clicks. Yeah. <laughs> so balance. You're talking about that. You're like this guy. I mean, I, you had no balance. So I'm assuming too, right? Yeah. And so what does, what does that mean for you? Like you said, like balance. I mean, even in entrepreneurship, yeah. there is that like balancing them. Let's just say balance. Wow. But if you make your boundaries what they are, you can have things out of life if you put the boundaries strong in there. So yeah. talk a little bit more about that, yeah. easing in entrepreneurship and then like the boundaries. Yeah. And, it, it, and honestly, that this has shifted so dramatically. It could be over the past, I, I think it's been six years now. So, and this has shifted entirely. So I think early on, um, my first year I made, I don't know, a quarter of what I was making before, you know? So, so that was like full, yeah. all, all hands on deck, like, I've got little kids at home. I've got a mortgage. That makes it even harder. Yeah, it's hard, man. You know, it's like, you know, it can't, can't, can't fail. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. messing up. Um, so that, so I talk in a very different place than I was six years ago. But for me now, um, you know, I, I think when I, when I think about that, it's like, uh, so there, there's this, uh, um, author at Redman County, where we felt essentialism. And, and he reads and says, instead of, Think about how to get board things done. Think about how to get the right things done. So, you know, you guys are business owners. Um, for me, if you have your priority list of what you want to accomplish, there was always a lot of it. And unfortunately, I think sometimes those things are competing with each other. So, um, like, I, I'm not going to lie. I, I like expanding my business. I like working. I like growing my business and making more and things like that. So that that is important to you. That's on my priority list. But Above that was being a good husband, and above that was being a good dad. And I think that those things are repeat. You know, the, Elon Musk is super successful. I, I don't know, maybe maybe he's a great dad, but I think it would probably be really hard if you were traveling hundreds of days a year and, and uh, working 100 hours a week. It, that's probably hard. So um, I got to a place where it was, well, my kids don't care how successful I am. They want to play a game. You know, and so, um, yeah, going back to this point, it's like the idea of priority number one is be a really good husband, like a really good husband. not not just checking a box to like be a suit partner, like be there, you know, and number two is be the best dad. And that means for me, like being present all the time and being part of their lives and making that a real priority. And if those two things are going on, then actually like growing business is way down the line. You know, so I, I try to now I'm fortunate. And again, it wasn't always the case. So I, I know I'm coming from a, this is kind of a place of privilege to be able to say this, but now I get to make that decision of, okay, maybe, maybe you won't expand or I, maybe I won't go back to work after dinner. And I'm going to try to really hit those, those priorities that are for me that are hundred apps more important than the other ones. It's earned privilege, love too. So you're like a tuck from it's earned privilege. Like you probably built something that at itself has been able to see itself that you don't have to worry about a mortgage next month if right. you take an early day of like getting up at three thirty because you want to hit, you know, dinner with your wife or whatever it might be. And so like there is another side of that, right? It's like you build something, but hopefully at some point it can run itself. Yeah. You know, and so that way you're not working inside this, like the other people always say you're working on it, right? Totally. And so I love that. And that's very challenging. I think you're right. I think there is a spectrum of like being the best of things. And sometimes it does, like those at the very top tier, as, as far as entrepreneurs are concerned, there is like a, um, a certain point, like for me, I want to have a family one day too. So I'm on like the earlier track of like looking at you and hearing this, that I'm going to have to be like, okay, that's my number. That's that's where I hit. Where I'm like, okay, I'm hitting the brakes a little bit, so I can be there because I want to be a good father, and a good husband, and those things too. Lord. And so that's cool to see that you've been able to do that. And so you mentioned what makes you like what is defined for you as being a good like parent. Well, like what about a husband? Like what does that look like? What's like the definition for you being like that's top tier? Yeah. This is my definition of being a good husband. Yeah. So um, we've been married 14 years now, and like. It's a long time, you know, like we're starting to get up there being a good, that's a good number now. Um, it, and again, that's changed dramatic from some four or some years ago that I think like that means for me, like being, being there, I am, I am her first thing and she is mine. And, and like really, again, almost nothing else plays, right? And so that's the part I think I missed early on, but it's that hundred X priority of like 
this is a hundred times more important. My relationship with her is a hundred times more important than the next one. And the next one's important too, but it's it's not even it's not even on a chart compared. And so that means like, yeah, be there. Be there for, for whatever's needed in that in that season, but be present and be make that so much more important than anything else. That's awesome, man. That's I think we add to that a little bit too. I think it's important to have it in terms of things on top of outside of just business, just if you don't have those things you're going to feel, I think, lost in your business. Like, even if you're having success in your business, it's not going to be fulfilling in a lot of ways. And I think that also depends on the person, too. Like, there's different types of people. Like, that may be the only thing they need to focus on. Hey, that's, 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 and you, and I guess that's the important thing, is allowing yourself to accept those are rules of, it is whatever you want to make. So you want to go be the most, you know, quote-unquote, financially successful, go be that. Mm-hmm. But if, if you want to... You, do other things if it's relationship based or parenting based, then do that. I got super important, and that should be a framework as a seeking frame. Yes, it yeah. is. Why is it so important to you? Like, is it will you inherently like raised that way, where like family comes first? Is that something that's like a product of like something you establish in your adolescence? Like, I want to be a good parent, a good husband. Where where's that? Where's the source of that? I don't know. I, I think it comes like. Um, I think for me, it seems like there's some scarcity in, in particularly in the time period, like for my kids, you know, we, you have this very defined amount of time, right? So like the first couple of years, you know, they, they, you don't have this deep verbal communication with them, anything like that. So you, you have this, you have this time period of having real conversations and then all of a sudden beat team, I mean, not not that you don't talk anymore, they're not there. But this, you know, you're, the amount of time spent with them is dramatically reduced. So it's like there's not many aspects of life that have this really defined expiration date or time. And with the kids, it is that way. So, so my wife and I we, we talk about that a lot. But it's like you're you're kind of running through the the tape of the race, you know, for that 18, and the name is valid, and then how oh, you're, you're for the most part. You know, you, you did your job. That's awesome, man. And I think, like, especially for youngsters, like, and you youngster out there listening, that's like 18 to 25. You still spend that time period, like, unpacking yeah. childhood and sure. like, sure. responsibilities, habits, and all the different things and stuff. And so, like, you're right. Like, you got to leave them prepared for whatever they do in life. Because, yeah, you're right. We're an adult. I mean, they can go to jail at 18. Yeah. So they make real life decisions real quick at 18 it's legally. Off, yeah. Yeah. And so, like, um, I think that's awesome that you you set that aside, and that's super. Where I think it's something that's kind of lacking in a lot of ways in our in our society right now. It's just like preparing the kids for just being good problem solvers, having values, habits, and stuff like that. Like it's crazy, and the fact that you're able to do that as also being an entrepreneur makes you a little bit different than most folks that come on this show. I'm not gonna lie, it's true. Yeah. It's really art. I mean, I've been for a long time. I I felt a lot of pressure. Um, and talk about taking off stress. It's like this idea of being all in all feeble. So I, I want to be, you know, this great husband, great dad, uh, great business leader, great in the community, great friend, like all, all these things. Great sponsor. Great spots. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> up there. Um, but you just can't, you know, you, you actually can't, you don't have enough time. You don't have enough energy um, to do all those things. So um, yeah, picking these, that could, it, that's helped me a lot to, like I talked about the, Using that as a decision framework. So, I mean, even there's a, um, I don't know, we had an opportunity to span a couple months ago. We took a hard look at it and just said, uh, actually, no, because it's going to take me away more from my family. It's going to take a huge toll on me for time, if you know, that, that I need to commit. And no, we're, we're not going to do that because like, that, that doesn't hit one of those hundred ass priorities. I love it. We like to take a quick moment and thank our sponsors. Home Day. Are you an employer looking to boost employer retention and recruitment? Home Day offers a unique benefit program that helps your employees buy their dream home while saving an average of $4,000 on closing costs. Neon Pig Creative. Bring brands to life with Neon Pig Creative. Dazzling designs and strategic marketing make businesses stand out. 
Spark creativity at neonpigcreative.com. That's neonpigcreative.com. Exponential Exponential impact. impact. Fuel startup success with exponential impact. Mentorship, resources, and support available to amplify impact. Mm -hmm. Join a community of change makers at exponentialimpact.com. That's That's (laughs) exponentialimpact.com. Fast signs. Fast signs can help you with all your signage and visual marketing needs. Whether you're starting a new business or just need a signage refresh, let fast signs help you. Make your statement. That's fastsigns.com. Cars Cars Helping Helping Charities. Charities. Cars Helping Charities is a turnkey fundraising solution for nonprofits. Cars Helping Charities allows your nonprofit to accept vehicle donations, which are sold, and then the funds go to the organization. Mm. CHC is partnering with my nonprofit of choice, Mattersville, Mm -hmm. to help them raise funds through vehicle donations. Please consider donating your car to support Mattersville. CHC will pick up any car, an old clunker you have sitting in your driveway, or a car you just don't feel like selling anymore. Make sure to visit Cars Helping charities.org that's cars helping charities.org now let's get back to the show so you kind of already answered this but because you just said it a little bit ago but how did you learn how to say no because that's the more recent no yeah but like in the beginning you're like i want to do this great i want to do that great how do you learn to say no when you're just like you know you're just you're just getting out there in the world and you want to be the best at every day yeah. and this is also not on so new you just want to be great right, right. and you're trying yeah if you're like a was it called like a boat at the rudder, right? Like you're just trying to be, be good at something. Right. So how do you learn that early on? Yeah, I and I again like five years ago, I, I would have I just fell <laughs> that, you know. Uh, maybe maybe two years ago, I'd say all that, but I think it's it's really it's for me, it's making that it's I know I keep saying the same thing, but it's making that list of yes. what's the hundred X, what what what's the two things that are on the chart and everything else to not. At least to the short plan. I love that perspective. Uh, yeah. I think that's why you're a finance guy, huh? Because like finance guys are very like literal, black and white, yeah. right? And yeah. is that and and let's talk a little bit about that too, like finance, um, and business. I think some things in entrepreneurship like are hardest to come by as far as skill sets, and I think the, the that's one of the hardest ones. Oh, is, people skip it. Well, yeah, <laughs> it's the, like the first thing to do. Someone goes on a Shark Tank or something like that. Is like, do you know your numbers? Like, do you know your numbers? But yeah. Talk, talk a little bit about yeah. that. <laughs> I'm obsessed with my numbers. That, that's what I know. That's what I'm good at. Uh, like I don't do bookkeeping or accounting like that. That's not it. Um, but common and law statements, forecasting, like that. That's that's really my, my greatest swing. That's what I'm good at. Um, I work tremendously on, on the business. I I, um, I don't know how to make a sign. I can't make a sign. Uh, but I, I can, I can love the pieces that he does. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, that, that's a good thing about entrepreneur. You got to delegate and like get the tools to leverage your time too. Yeah. Like if you're doing all that stuff, that would be kind of hard thing to do. If you got like one, two, three, four, five, six clients, and then you're making all the signs. Yeah. And yeah. There's, that's the principle of like running a successful business mm-hmm. is learning how to leverage your time for well, one more customer. And it sounds like you've been able to do that. And that's awesome. How did you get into the fast signs? Let's talk a little bit more about that. So uh, I, I looked at, so I bought it. Um, it's, it's 31 years old this year. So when I bought it, it was like 2010 and 26. But I met, let me stop. Um, yeah, and so I, I was just looking at businesses buy. And, and so being a finance guy, I, I look at the books and I could get through, I mean, you looked at under it. So I mean, if I took deep dive, then. That has been fun. Yeah, it was even fun. It really was. Um, and you get to understand the, the books, and you're right. A lot of them are really struggle with, with uh, keeping clean books, and so that, that's tricky. But um, you looked at a ton of them and just checked a lot of the boxes of what we wanted. And so, I um, mean, bought in 2018. Oh, that's awesome. And I think it's awesome like, to give entrepreneurs a little credit. I think a lot of enthusiasm, passion, like that runs the first part of your hard years. Because mm-hmm. like logic and like numbers like could be pretty stark and crazy in the very beginning. So yeah. I feel like that's probably why it's like a, a last end skill that people learn as far as like the numbers is to cause like you have to run over a lot of passion in order to get yeah. better. Because the uh, logic sometimes doesn't make sense. To keep going. Right. That's like a famous Steve Jobs quote is like yeah, logically this made sense many times for me to quit, but I just kept building. Yeah. There's, so, a, there's a culture aspect to that too. I think we as Americans almost wear it as a badge to say that we don't like math. And other, <laughs> yeah. and we almost think that. So it's like we're easily attracted to be other things outside of math, and we block it out. Like, there's a little bit of aspect about that, and so I think if you're shining in that aspect, you can really get ahead in lots of ways. 
Yeah, it's just a different subject too, because right, like math and science are like inherent problem solving skills, as opposed to like I was a business person. It's like, cool. Why do the concepts I can memorize things? But when I became an entrepreneur, I had to learn how to be a problem solver. But like those who were doing math early on, science, like like you get a math problem, you got to solve it. You got to like problem solve to do it. It's not like you know A B C D. You know, it's yeah. usually like you got to work your problem out. So, like, I love those people who have those brains, those math and science brains. But I inherently didn't have that when I was younger. I had to learn that later down the road, and it ends up okay. Like, when I was younger, I'd give up with maybe eighty percent of the problem. But math, you got to solve the whole thing all the way through, and you keep pushing too. I tell you to get it, and sometimes it may take five, six months to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, but like, it's crazy. <laughs> it's very entrepreneur, like, in, in a lot of ways, math, but also like math, science, art. Art is the same way too. I think as much, right? So you have to be- who would push to to figure out, okay, what makes this work in this way, you know? <laughs> so there's a lot of aspects about that. And I love it all. I've had, I recently started getting in, into more math stuff, uh, trying to sort of like learn about engineering stuff for other reasons. We can talk about that in the next so. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I think that there's a lot of problems on the goes in lots of aspects in life. Uh, but, but yeah, I don't even know I'm getting at it. So yeah. <laughs> With uh, fast science, like what were some early on issues and things like i mean obviously um starting and that was probably your first business of your own right at least officially or yep yes talk a little bit about that yeah uh it was crazy so i took a ton of debt to buy it and yeah. we put all the chips in the middle of the table oh, and uh yeah we we had um bunch of little kids at home and it was it was hard man. it was really really hard um i worked all day every day and it was to your point of just like you know it's this passion thing whatever it is it was just gutted out like there's no choice to it other than to make it happen in the manga for it um in a quarter of the day before you were yeah which i did yeah definitely i didn't totally expect it happen but yeah but the, you know the debt had to get paid up so mm-hmm. it was like that that's it so that that was it um it was really hard well, I think it's really cool that you started with buying a business. I don't know if you're into like a lot of the people out there who talk about that. Like Cody Sanchez is a very like foremost expert yeah. on um, different things. I've always loved that. I think my career will probably end with some level of private equity for me because I just love businesses and I love looking into them and seeing those things. But I've also owned a business for quite some time. So I'm, I'm coming from the perspective like I screwed up a lot of shit before I got into it actually knew. I was like backwards from you like as far as buying a business. Yeah. And so... Do you have a passion for something of that sort too? Just like looking at a business, you said you looked at a lot before Fast Science. Yeah. Do you think it'll feel like that might be on the radar? Of course, if it fits into your values of like having your boundaries yeah. with family and everything. And well, finance. So sure. Yeah, yeah. all finance, yeah. No, I, I think it's a phenomenal option. I mean, for, for me, it was, um, again, because I have little kids in a mortgage and all this stuff, I had an expertise to what I needed to make. And it's a great, it's a great option. I mean, you can use debt to and create value kind of out of nothing. Now, so you, you have some money as a down payment, but you take the debt and you pay off the debt through the products of the business, and it's a great way to make it happen. But I love that. I mean, that's that's what, that's what I do. Yeah, and you probably learned a lot, right? Because like, yes. I'm sure you put a lot of money down to buy this business, but sometimes in some situations, you can do some creative financing yeah. to get into a situation where, say, you pay some money off for, like future revenue or something yeah. like that, and like, there's yeah. ways to get in there, and like, buying business is a little bit different than buying a house. Like, this is it's a little bit different. It's down the wild west. Yep. And you're, you're always, you're working with Ashman North, so it's not, yeah, you're right. It's not like the, we just do the same thing, make the right. offer. No, it's totally at least how to with that way. And yeah, it's totally different. You got people quitting out of nowhere. Or you got so many variables. With the house, you just, it's a straightforward plan. You know exactly what it's going to be like your whole way through. Well, that, that's the other thing. I mean, after you do all this deal on the on the back end and you buy, you sign everything, you have to walk in there the next day. Hi, I, no, I know. Oh, yeah. No, other than, your brother. And if your answer ready, that's a little different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. My, uh, my favorite guy, well, I, I love all of our two, but my favorite guy at our team, we, he had his back to me the whole the whole first, you know, my hello, I'm G, I own the business now. You know, he just, it's tough. It's tough to the people, they're, they're worried. They don't know if you know what you're doing. And maybe you do, maybe you don't either. So it's, it's different. People are kind of buck and uncertainty and change you know and like if you don't have those like inherent people skills and if you're a numbers guy and coming from a different background yeah. like 
how do you learn those? Because like, yeah, learn pretty quick, especially in your business and you're mm-hmm. buying a business with the employees already attached. Yep. Talk a little bit more about that too. You kind of did a little bit right there with yeah. the employee of yours, but like, that's a hard skill to learn, man. Yeah, yeah I, I think that the the they're just always going to look at you and they're watching Drake for eight from the jump. So how is this going to go? Can I trust this guy? Is he anything, you know, instead of running a business around that I've been on blue spy life with it. You know, so I think that from the beginning, I always try to take that that side of things of, okay, these are people that I care deeply about that they are responsible or they're my responsibility. Them. You know, like they, they have more chance than little kids at home. And um, it's a tremendous amount of responsibility and they, they rely on me, you know, to, to do the right thing. So that was, that was heavy. That was heavy to it at the beginning, not having that previous so you said, I'm responsible for eat big shot. Uh, How big was the company and you got it? Well, there was, I think there were four or five employees. He didn't and now the cheap. You can say it, it, it was it's been a lot. Yeah, it's been a lot of work, but um, it's my greatest source of pride now as a business owner that I get to, you know, help create jobs as like, and provide the families and you know, it was crazy during COVID. Like we just we committed where they were oh we can't you can't stop paying people, you can't they keep off, like we're gonna just keep it going. So I, I so I think it was coming from that that side of things is like, you know, these are people that we care deeply about. We're um, thrilled to have them on our team and that I, I just take a responsibility and really seriously when I make decisions, I I know that I have their standards and balance. Yeah, uh, coming from a spot where I've had a lot of plays, especially with my festival back in the day when I had like a lot of people early on. Um, a lot of the hardest things for me was having a team that I loved and supported and we got real close and then like settle the beef or quit yeah. or I'd have to fire somebody. I almost took the wind beneath my sails a little bit because I felt like I had this vision. Would you have someone that you know is a really good fit? You're like, oh, we're going to go from A to B and they're going to be with me the whole way. Yeah. And then they're not part of the story anymore. And so like for me, I'm a little bit more expert on that was a big blow to me. Like, I just think that's part of the entrepreneurship journey too. Is just like sometimes like those you think are going to be there a little time might leave or life career advances things happen. Right. And like Andrew said, like you're right, you're buying a business and you're buying like the management of other people. How has that been for you too? Like from the very beginning, 2018 buying this business to to now, and you know people coming and going. I'm assuming, right? Yeah, I mean, Albert is a little in the middle. Covid right there. It's, it's, it's so hard. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. With it, keep, I like. I'm our teams like you just cheer. You know, like I, I always tell them like, man, I, I want to grow. I want you to grow in our company um, as much as possible. And if there's a better opportunity for you out there, I'll be the first one to shake your hand at the right thing. You know, and so that, that's kind of the strategy that we say all the time. We, we want our people to get better. We grow all the time. Um, we hope that that's with us and we want them to be with us for the next 50 years. But if it's not, if there's a better situation for them again they're they're people man and she's like i i want the, the best for them you know always and so it, you're right it's hard though we, we've had that early on we had people that we thought yeah they're going to be the the new you know the gm of the this or going down the you know a couple of years they be and it's it's hard yeah it's people it's always people business so yes we were talking about a connection to this building night about a GM that works here, right? You think so? Or uh, a friend of the person who works here. I'll have to get a name for you. It's, I mean, one of two. So ask me. Yeah. This people this. Like, I was telling uh, the gal who manages the space, I'm like, we're having Pete on. He owns Fast Sound. She's like, which location? And I thought it was two, but I was kind of going back with her. I was like, I think it's two, but I know there's one for, I'm obviously one for sure. Yeah. She's like, oh, was, okay. Well, my friend's like the GM of Bun Bun. And I was like, oh, wow. I'll have to talk to him about that. Tinty, this is all world here in the rings, man. Yeah. It's definitely a small world. Tell us, and we probably should have asked this in the beginning, what is Fast Science? And then we'll talk a little bit more about Carlos helping charities. Sure. What is Fast Science? Yeah. So Fast Science is a visual marketing and signage company. Um, basically everything that you could possibly put a company's name on. We do. So um, all signage, exterior building sign, vehicle wraps, um, interior building signs, vinyl decals on the walls, frosted windows, um, everything. Any things we might know at the same time? Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we've done a lot. You're going to put me on a spot a little bit here. And you mean just of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I would say we've 
in 31 years to be we touched a lot of a lot of sun. I can only imagine. Yeah, they do. Yeah, that makes sense. So for my festival, obviously, I always had like a sign partner, and they'd yeah. rent like 150 signs for me from the festival. Yeah, like, a frames to like the little picket uh, signs. Yeah. Um, you guys do banners too? We do. Oh, yeah, sure. I should have been using you the whole time, right? <laughs> yeah, we're together now. What about the building, uh, building signs, like the the ones, the big ones you see? Yeah, I'm sure. Every, Those seem like the bigger ticket ones. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the bigger ticket would go, they're fun. They're obviously a lot more challenging. Yeah, I would just think. Holy yeah. Yeah. So do you host a pretty big space, I'm assuming, right? Because you have all these different things you're printing and you're creating. Yeah, I have 3D printer. I'm assuming if it's like an exterior sign, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we do... Um, we're expanding. Actually, we just bought a building down off of that. Um, so we're like built in our space. We're set the meeting in a couple of months. So we're super excited about that. Um, they have a drone kind of busting at the seams of our current space. It's, yeah. yeah. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. That's what, awesome. Talk a little bit more about the business of signage and, and printing. Um, who does what? What are rules in that, in that space? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a, obviously a, a sales team. Um, inside and outside, so you know, there's a lot of people follow us for it. A lot of and we're, we're going out trying to find to um, we have a design team that figures out what the customer wants and tries to break down on on paper out of the street. Um, and then there's a full production team that that makes it the advent so there's a planning, creating of designs, and then there's a mint salt scene on the back end to this good cycle date month to get it up by the wall. So we need to think see as business podcast. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> that would be freaking awesome. Yeah. One of the hardest things when I was running my festival was all the sponsors that we had. There are other business owners too, but they didn't know like logos. Andrew knows all about logos because he does logo design too. Yeah, design stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like they'd send me a logo. I was like a PNG. I was like Stores. 150 pixels. Yeah. 150, and they're like, is this uh, going yeah. or like a banner? Oh, like, for my email signature. So you know, yeah. I'm going to get nerdy on this. The technical side of that is ironic when it comes to like big like uh massive ball uh, stadium like you know by like, even the digital ones yeah. like or you're just massive prints it's dots per inch and on those big ones when you see them from afar it actually is it's not lower resolution technically but it is lower though like it's it's weird like huh. your dots are bigger though so it's it's just it's oh interesting, interesting. Yeah. yeah I learned that same. with uh, Rochelle at a uh, Trace tra- tra- City Cycle yeah, yeah they do oh, my cool. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's pretty cool I mean I have a good friend who just bought speaking of buying a company he bought Ink Monster in Denver I don't know if you've heard of them yeah. but like he just had a big print or mural I think it was print on like the Colorado Convention Center you know like a Godzilla or like a, no Jurassic Park like exhibit or something like that I, I was like, that's incredible, man. Like, things you can print. The technology is really cool. And you can you can put vinyl on bricks and things now. The high is what they did that. So um, the technology is great. It's all changing the really fast. How do you expand with that? Like, do you have, like, a big warehouse you have to, like, attach to your retail space? How does that work? Yeah, I mean, we, we just find the space where we can get it. So we've been, we've had to be creative over the years. Like, as you expand, you know, it's tough. You just got to kind of meet the demand. So, um, yeah, we've been really creative. That's so awesome. Now, but our new space is going to be tremendous. Um, yeah, double the size of uh, space for wrapping vehicles. So we're each, we built it big enough to bring in the van. Uh, I'm sorry, buses for wrapping and oh. like that. So That's just it off flat? Yeah. Okay, sweet. We had a local motive bus here last week we should have had him get his rap because i think he just spray painted it yeah. that's part of the vibe of it. that'd be cool to get a rap i think he actually did a rap and you know it was all spray painted and i don't know i think it was spray painted but these raps are like mm-hmm. it was a party bus like an old school mm-hmm. like ski bus party yeah. bus and that would be pretty cool with all it's like yeah. for you guys to do for, for businesses i have a, a little beef about businesses they they'll pay a few thousand dollars for some weapon but then they struggle to justify the cost of the video it takes twice as much work <laughs> so it, yeah it, it's about sales yeah it's about it's fun it's it's it. fault. yeah i just i just run into that as running a video video production company for businesses it's like you, you literally just spend all this money on racks and you can't justify video they yeah. swing no system to do that <laughs> you need more sales yeah exactly yeah. a little bit more sales on that yeah for sure <laughs> it's true thank you for buying <laughs> yeah, we have a, uh, so this is kind of funny now I think about it because like for all my festivals of the years, I was paying five direct competitors and DocuMart, I'm with DocuMart, I think it is DocuMart, 
And like over the years, past six years, I've seen them expand. And so I kind of know a little bit what you're talking about because they had like an order of like an interior, like it looked like a doctor's office. And then right. slowly but surely, like it was like a little circular like area with all these offices. That they were just taking over all. Yeah. And then they kind of expanding their services. It was really cool to see like what that looks like for them as far as expanding services, what they can do and turn around. Like I'm sure that's all part of your business too and probably have like very similar to like your thought processes when you're opening a new space. I'm assuming the thing that takes the most space are like the printers. And yeah, printers for sure. What kind of printers are we talking? Are they different printers or is it all just like one giant printer? Even print all the, there, there's a lot of different ones. Right now we use roll to roll, but we will get a big flatbed printer that you know an EV twenty by twenty to feed to get it in there. And so there's a lot of cool stuff. They've rock cool to us. How much do those guys run? Just so our folks, yeah, all they were also hundred. Well over on I was imagining it. it's, that's crazy. I was literally was that was the number I was thinking was over that. <laughs> yeah, but it yeah, it saves a lot of not. Dang, a hundred hundred K. We yeah. uh we always do the business stuff, right? We're a business podcast, but like we go to any coffee shop and we at this point we kinda know like the espresso machine we're like, okay. And then he has twenty thousand or yeah, twenty thousand espresso and then what's your app you use? You said there's Google Lens, it's an AI watch that's been out since like twenty nineteen and, and like people just don't know about it that much. If you literally take a picture and it'll pull up like exactly the information. We we and Edgar actually did it at uh what's the taco place downtown that was on the podcast last year? Zucalos. Zucalos. They had these toothpicks that had like flamingos and all this stuff. They literally took a picture because me and Edgar were curious about how much each toothpick costs. Yeah. Like these are a tie. I bought toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> and so I literally took a picture of it, found the exact ones on Amazon and everything has like, it. There's there's you no know, investing into their business. But they high quality. They were high quality, yeah. Well, they were expensive price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just did quite high quality. Dang. Can put this, this is on can. They did yeah, Google Lens is cool. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Use it to look at a palm tree. Just yeah, say what kind of trees? Yeah, well, I, I, now I use GPT or Gemini for yeah. or stuff like that. Uh, so Google Lens, Lens is kind of going the other way because you can use Gemini with Google's newer AMI. Yep. Um, I use it to identify Pokemon for I mean, it snakes. Uh, <laughs> like it feels like it's like a Pokedex. You know, it's weird. Uh, which is a Pokedex literally you can take a picture, like a nose thing, and like it, it's really cool technology. I love where text done. Like, yeah. like I said, I keep going tangents, and I'll keep it real. I'll roll about tangents back a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so when you bought the business too, you were, I mean, a lot of people just buy business for the name, maybe some employees, but you're probably buying equipment too, right? When yeah. you're, and so even back then, uh, I don't know if they're still in service, but I'm sure there was like some high end printers that yeah. you bought it with as well, yeah, right? Sure, we still have. That's awesome. And so with expansion, what does that look like? And like, what's a lifespan just on average of like a printer? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe like 10, 20 years. Yeah, like that's that. But I, I think, um, no, it's like this whole thing. Again, as an entrepreneur, you take this stair stepping. So <laughs> like we brew absolutely as much as we put in our space. And now we need more equipment, more people, more space, all these things. But yeah, it's a huge investment. It's going, okay, we're we'll now take down a huge new building that's stuff on square footage. And now go fill it up with new $100,000 printers. You know, it's flop. Yeah, I can only assume so. That's pretty cool business, man. I think the barrier to entry is pretty high up there, though, just because of the amount, like these types of printers you I get. Yeah, you know, just like a screen printer with like a couple of t-shirts, right. or like you guys are the real deal. Even from the, from the I mean, it's a thirty-one-year-old business. Yeah, makes up a lot of sense. Yeah. And so, you, but you invest and like you value business. Like that's awesome. It's not just a name and like no potential of things. It's actual art assets. Yeah. That's awesome. And we've served a lot of people in the city. We have a huge, you know, repeat. Us to live there. Yeah. Give a shot one of them out. Yeah, they ain't got that. I could cut that as well. See what's this podcast. We can't discuss that. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome, man. That's a cool business model. Talk a little bit more um, about Cars Helping Charities. We talked when we first met, I mean, over phone on. Um, he told me about it. I had no idea that that was even a type of business model. That's yeah. cool. How'd you fall into that and tell the folks at home? What it's about is about. I think you guess. Yeah, is it about cars, health, and charities? Yeah, I bought it. <laughs> I bought it. Um, <laughs> no, it, it was 2021. I bought it. We were looking for another thing to do, um, and yeah, it's a, it's an incredible business. So it helps nonprofits with their fundraising efforts. It helps them raise money. Um, so this industry has been out there for a while, but people donate all kinds of things. And one of the things they donate is vehicles. So um, cars, health, and charities is a Really a software chosen company where we partner with the Mount Office to be just a turnkey solution to help with this second people donations. So someone wants to donate a vehicle, we um, 
we process the whole thing for them. We we cut the checks to the charity and uh, we help them raise money. So we 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 love it. It helps people look good. Of the album. Yeah, the early on we talked about what kind of charities we'd be helping. I'll be happy the show and if we want to switch things up, I know. I think matters though was the night I sent your way. I think you actually had a conversation with yeah. them and like and we, we yeah yeah we seriously after the car donation. No way. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 I don't know if I told you too much about that story, but our 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 whole lives are parallel with Drew and myself because our best friends both Marines and they both took their life due to PTSD suicide, which drew him onto the path of Mattersville, which was traditionally a tiny house community for veterans struggling with PTSD and it was like a whole program they put them through um, to rehabilitate and to help others kind of plug it to the system and so on and so forth. Since then they've been able to have uh, PAC-22 and then they've introduced them to Wolf Dogs yeah. and to the end of sure you've yeah. talked to you all about that. You even brought them on the podcast a couple times. So, so, yeah. <laughs> and so, Randog. <laughs> yeah, he has his personal dog, Randog, which is his best friend. So Dick Dave, his best friend was named Randy. Okay. Randy Hansen. And so it, his personal wolf dog is named Randog. And he's just like sweet. It comes by best tools. He does, I mean, it's such a cool thing and it's helping so many people. So it's such a great cause. And I'm so glad you guys are connected. And it's just, it's really cool to see over the years what people have been doing, you know, with their businesses and how we've connected with one another. It's still a thought, right? This show. Well, yeah. And, You'd love to do that for you too, especially with so many people come on the show. I mean, be pretty needs like every business all over, right? Yeah. Anybody has a brick and mortar, anybody who's doing some kind of like event. I mean, there's so much that can be done with fast science. So we're down for both, man. That's awesome. Very and so for going back to cars helping charities, how long has that been around? And did you start that you know, yourself, right? No, no, oh, you bought that. that right? Oh, you bought that one too. Yeah. Okay. And um that's I think sixteen years now. Wow. Um, okay. That's crazy. So you got some maturity in some of your business there, sure. Yeah, I think it's important because it, you know, it helps in customer base and kind of the literary portion of it. Smart guy. Yeah, the, um, a lot of things um, that we've been looking from in the marketing space as of recent has been like automating old lists and automating just like what flows for like um, email and SMS marketing. So like I go into a business now and yeah, like I want to do digital marketing, digital ads, stuff like that. But the biggest thing is like, what's your base? Like who's in the funnel already for you guys? Because that, oftentimes that's how you jumpstart in business, especially if they've been around businesses like yours that you own, they've been around 10 plus years. They probably have a pipeline of the existing customers from their past or somewhere. And there's like a hodgepodge of different lists. Yep. And if you put that together, consolidate it. Those of you balance are further down the funnel when you convert. Or you're having a marketing conversation. You know, and that's what it's all about. Um, it sounds like you have that mindset, which again comes from your finance probably too. But like, talk a little bit about the marketing side of things. Like, where did you get that hat, or did you hire somebody? Or well, I go? no, I mean, I, I think the idea is just to always be fun or fight. So we we focus on that a tremendous amount of bass and skirts to get in. So they, yeah, we cut this huge customer base. Um, but most people don't wake up, you know. On a normal day, thinking about signs, and so you have to continually put yourself until they do. Until they, they do. <laughs> until they do. But we try to we try to just constantly be talking to our customers. You know, so every quarter or something, we're reaching out to everyone and making sure we're still here. We're still here. We're, we're still here. And then one of those times, kind of, they they respond back. They need something. Yeah. So there's that that copy shop. Uh, Marine three the old name. They've changed ownerships like two or three times since I've lived here. It's the one that Frank Sinclair, me, and you met at uh, Pikesburg. Pikesburg, yeah, yeah. But it's changed now recently. And uh, uh, Sarah Beth Grant, I think that's her name, she she bought it. She, she actually bought the business. And uh, they changed it to Treehouse uh, Coffee. And I, I was driving by Dye Academy and I see it. And I, I see the sign there. And I was like, that's a nice sign. <laughs> so I was like, and I was just wondering. I was like, she had to go. She, before she bought that business, she didn't. Probably think about. I was kind of thinking about fast signs and yeah. too. Like, like, it's just it's just interesting. I was like, I wonder how much that sign costs. <laughs> it's about as big as this table, you know. Okay. How, how big do you think a sign like that costs? I don't know. It's eliminated. I can't. I can't do you. There, there's well, details that like it's very specific. You know what we we talk about a lot though is like mm -hmm. you see that and you say, oh, that nice sign. I like that, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But if you ever put a sign, if you might want it to look like that, and so a lot of what we do is try to figure out, okay. You have something in your head. Our salesperson is there. They have something in their head. The designer has something separate. Mm -hmm. How do we, you know, delineate that all down to make it, you know, 
that one that you say the pop yeah. box. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, and also I mean, it just I think it had that connection to the place too as well, so it made me think about it even deeper. And I was like, Treehouse Pop, hey, that's an interesting name. I wonder if I should chose that. I was yeah. just having all these thoughts yeah. was, as a business owner and entrepreneur and just yeah. like creative in general. Yeah. It's like just every, everything about it. And I think it's cool. Yeah. I had a, um, I had a lot of vendors that always worked, but, but another one was Creative Consortium. I don't know if you've heard of them too, but they create and science too a bit. And uh, they created my recon marketing sign um, that was in my office for, gosh, a couple of years, right? Before I moved back to the old office. Where's it at now? It's just at the old office. So okay, it's so like so upper <laughs> that. Um, but like, it's cool. Like when you, cause they give me a tour. I like, so I've seen the back end of some of these and seen like yeah. the big printers that you're talking about. They're like the size bigger than this, this table. Yeah. It's just incredible to see, like, like you said, all this really depends. So when I, when we were going to make it, we were actually a year ago, I think we were going to go make a sign for us Oh well, yeah, yeah. or to use creative consortium. And then they gave us the price points and they're like, holy crap. It really gets us. It just depends on materials, vinyl materials. What kind of expensive advice like that? Though, I think. Yeah. And the size and all those different things. So right. like, how do you, if a customer comes to you and you kind of talked about this already, but like they have an idea, but then like in your head, you're like, all right, there's like 17 different options for those. How do you distill yeah. it down to like something? Yeah. Like, okay. He lines, I line, designer lines, we're ready to go. Yeah. No, I think it's super treacherous. Uh, we be talk about it today. We're talking about it because we, yeah, we don't sell widgets. We don't, there's not a thing that costs this. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about today at a sales meeting. Um, there's this huge span of customers. Some people don't care what it costs. They just want it mm-hmm. to look like that. And some people, they, they only care what it costs and they want to get it done for the, the cheapest they can. Yeah. And that is just a different product. And I think one of the trickiest things for us is that you're right. There are 17 different ways we can we can make that sign. And they're all different. They all have the price points and they all look different. And um and that's tricky. We we just tr- we try to our salespeople. We try to really get them to ask good questions to get a really good yeah. understanding of customer and see but where the pile is. It's very similar with with video. I, I, yeah, I was yeah. saying that. Yeah. It's, it's very custom. Like, and you have to, I guess it's probably similar with a lot of different types of clientele. But any type of business that has higher ticket kind of products is you got different types of customers. You know, yeah. different kinds of types of buyers. You know, that was, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, sales is hard, especially when you're duplicating yourself out. I'm sure you probably did sales for quite a long time and like duplicating that to a good salesperson, not only to sell something. In a lot of ways, most people can sell something, but like to distill it down like you're talking about, it's a definite like learned skill set. And if you don't have that experience, it's going to be very hard because yeah. then you can sell everything under the sun and the expectations all over the place. So that's where you get yourself in trouble. Always. And so like, how have you been able to train your salespeople to kind of work that through yeah. their brain to distill things down? It's, it's, Thing. Big skill. Yeah. I, I think the industry is super nuanced. So we just we just try to get the sun a lot of time just or you know before to set up use. There's some things. A banner for the most part is a banner. Um but once you get into more of these awesome things, it's it's just time in the south. It's just learning the, the ins and outs in the industry and then want to go bit kind of you know, we just constantly talk about it. And constantly talk about asking good questions. Try to understand us. Yeah, and, and a banner is a banner. But did you have the design? Did they already have a design already made? Or like, do we have to create the design for you? Like, right. Steve, where where is it going? Is it a fence or a yeah. building? Because that's a different... Yeah, and like, you, you guys probably also know what kind of sites work better in different totally. places. So you can have better designs. Right. This person has this design that's already made. But it's like, no one can read that from yeah. 40 feet away. You know, so you can do that. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of aesthetics. Like, yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah. But that makes it cool. It's, it's yeah. usually <laughs> different every day. Um, or thought. And then you get your good customers here, like recurring. Like I know for me, like I know exactly what I wanted. I know yeah. the material. I know this one, you know, this many grommets on there, whatever for a yeah. banner. I knew like everything. And so even like for our show, we had like trophies. So we went to glass oh, for trophies. Uh, like I know that is, I bought the design. Here's the line I want on it. Yeah. And like I'm more focused at that point. But like when can you get it to me? For like yeah, you have to get yeah, country. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like a month out, so it's like they're like, oh hell yeah, Mark, this is great. But like sometimes. New sponsor comes on board. So, like on the other side of the table, as a business and the bed business, mm-hmm. like I had a big sponsor come on two weeks before the festival, and like I have to do new t shirts, new banners. New, I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I come to someone like you, but hey, man, I know it's Monday, but I need this by Friday. What can we do? Right. Right. Do you get a lot of that? We do. Yeah, we do. And we like, you know, I'm a business owner too, so I understand to, to yeah. that point. I understand sometimes it happens. Now, some people just, are that guy? Yeah, you know, <laughs> they, they, they always call on a Wednesday and they need it by Friday, and you know you do what you can do. 
Um, but you, you try to be, I mean, we just try to be, do good. We try to do good work. And uh, for a lot of times that involves situations where, yeah, you get in a pinch. So you know, we try to do things like that. We're going to discount. If you just bought a sign, but we just, you know, or the banner, but we just need to add a logo. We're, we're not going to get you again full price for that thing. You know, we just try to work with you. Mm-hmm. Do what we would want done to us. I guess. That's awesome, and and for you, I would expect it to be pretty challenging because you have a lot of services they offer. Like on the sales process, how does that work? Like you got banners, you got like signs, you got like big prints for like just normal yeah. signage. How do you project out those numbers uh, on a monthly basis? I'm assuming there's seasonality, maybe to yeah. it, yeah. Um, but like with all those different services, you know, all those different price points for those services, I'm sure. At one point, it was super good. And maybe it still is. It's like very, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot going on there with your services yeah. and pricing, right? Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of data. I have I have uh, thirty one years. Yeah, <laughs> thirty one years of monthly data. So I and again, I'm I'm a nerd. So I I like it. I sit and I project out and uh, yeah, we we try to figure out. But uh, well, that's a lot of my job is looking around the corner a little bit and saying, okay, because of seasonality, I we get busy and we got to sell up to meet the demand and all that that's great yeah as a leader what do you do to, to ensure that your people are taken care of you said you, a lot of times you are like their biggest cheerleader which is awesome that's what every employee wants to know like yeah. one like they're going to support me too like whatever decision i make but the pressure's off because pete's already said hey i just want what's best for you yeah. but like what else do you do beyond that as a leader for yeah like, so I mean, it sounds not cliche, but I, I just try to treat them the way that I would want to treat it. Um, we, I want my business to be the best place to work in Colorado Springs. I mean, yeah. um, so, and, and I, I tell people all the time, I, I promise I'm not going to be the highest aim, um, but I can probably win on everything else. And so um, the nature of our business is to allow me to say everyone what I would love to, although I really do. I really try to pay everyone as much as I can. But then we, we do like unlimited time off. So that's that's something that we rolled out a couple of years ago. I got super sick of pounding days. And if you took a look at that, the board did that. It, it takes, be a professional. Um, the people that work for us are so good at what they do. Uh, they're so skilled. They're pros. And they are responsible ducks. And so we, we just try to treat it that way. So I, I, don't, I don't get worried if someone's eight minutes late. Um, I don't get worried if someone got super shit to the doctor and I want them to go take vacations and things like that. So we try to make it cool split to work. Um, I just stopped happy hour with our with our two just to pop here, and we do that as much as we can. Um, yeah, but we just we 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 just try to mean into that aspect, just make it similar that people want to. I wonder if COVID ex- uh, pushed a little bit of that kind of thinking. I heard a lot of boys like. Maybe it's not your work case, but it made people kind of think that the ski were forced to work from home or forced to work. Expense so made employers, I think, think different in of how, how they do it. Actually, it's pretty small, but it's very similar. When someone says, literally earlier today, someone needed to go to home to 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 go check on a listing for, for a house or whatever. And they literally just said in the Slack, like, I'm to go to this, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, it's hey, here, you know, that. Got to do that? You know, as long as it doesn't interfere with their work. And sure. like, yeah, they, yeah, there's a lot yeah. of aspects. Like, because a lot of it's very similar, it sounds like, to what, what, how you search your, yeah. your business. Yeah, we we it's in, we're in the in for the law hall, you know. Mm-hmm. So we we just want we want people for the next year. All I mean, we try to hire great people that are good at what they do. We better froze and we want them for the rest of our lives. Um, that's kind of always our our, our chance. So um, it comes back to that priority list again. Like there, we can't do we can't be all things for everyone, but we can be really good at a couple of things. That we just we try to think to ask her. Life is not about work it's certainly not about mm-hmm. signs that we try to be a little flexible we have also like, who what events and stuff it sounds like you happy hour but like do you guys do like yearly like summer events or annual like birthday parties for the company yeah. and then like a winter holiday party you yeah do all that we too throw a big bash for christmas every year yeah. that's kind of that's kind of our uh trademark thing and we just still wild you get elk safe uh see what well, it's who plans that as a summer like it's war is it you that's, personally that's nice <laughs> cool. Well, cool yeah it is not doing well. Yeah, is it getting put from your team or like you just like, hey guys, I got no. a plan, here we go. Yeah, I try to pick up just a bang restaurant. You know, like we, we really just try to go for it every year. So it's, that's awesome. What cool. plate have you been around? Like, talk about Colorado Springs restaurants? Yes. Okay, so like, yeah, we've been, we've been all around. Uh, 
Street Car Pi 20 and yeah. Social. Um, what's it called? Oh, so cool. Uh, wait. You have Quadia down that strip. Uh, are you talking about like, like steak restaurants? Or, or yeah, well, so, was in the name. Yeah, I'm good with cereal. Yeah, I can't think yet. I'm saving them out. But yeah, we try we try for it. Make the big ever get small. Yeah, years back, we got to get back and doing this recon specifically, but we used to do a bunch of big parties and Andrew and Edgar and my girlfriend, Danielle. And like we've, we've had some fun times. We went to Top Golf. We went to Buca de Beppo. We got like, like that. Well, you yeah. know, you know Buca de Beppo or yeah. Yeah. this. You can tell him. You got the Pope room. So like we had the Pope's head in the middle of like a giant circular <laughs> table. I used my Google lens actually because we, we and Edgar were not curious about a flat. And I was like, what flag is that? So I used my Google Lens for the Italian line. I didn't know about it. Yeah, but it, those are the things that like connect us together and like break bread. And then you get like a different side of like your leadership too, right? Like no stress of work. They're being real. They're being human. You could see like a girlfriend or a family or kids. Cool. And like, it's just so special. And then yeah. I think yeah. Mandy's kind of right about like COVID. Like it did take a little bit of that because like, we're humans at the end of the day, and like we need connection. Yeah. Yeah. There was a major shift, I think, too, in the app. And regardless of whether that affected your business or other businesses, I think it affected our culture like massively. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Like, work, working home was. We went from that you would get fired if you wanted to work from home to now it's okay. It could, like, now, like, it's actually possibly even preferable in some situations. Yeah. So, uh, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting. We started landing this plane here, sir. Um, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been awesome. Thank you so much for your insight and a lot of different uh, familiar places that we've been, right? Rochester, New York, and like you fall in one call oil, and I love that. I want to change the 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 the, the phrase you just said for landing this plane to let's sign this contract. All right, it's so fast signing this contract. <laughs> awesome. Well, Pete, where can we find you? That's your camera right there. Yeah, uh, it's the business fastsigns.com slash one eight one. Or four four seven eight. Those are the two what two sheets uh, for the website. We're on Instagram, Fast Signs Colorado Strings, and uh, you can just call seven one nine five seven four five three three three. Also, we'd love to help. Awesome. Visit Cars Helping Charities. Cars Helping Charities or perfect. Thank you so much for coming on, man. Yeah. Again, thank you so much for your support. You put the lights on for us. Literally, we just bought a light using our sponsorship nice. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> last week. So we appreciate everything that you do to support not only our podcast with the community and like the people that we bring on the show we have a lot of connections we can yeah. make for you too especially yeah. like some other entrepreneurs who are doing events or doing things that they're definitely going to need your guys' services so we'll link up after the show like they'll definitely awesome. do that man yeah. you really awesome. enjoyed it this has been the COS Business Podcast um, and we'll see you guys on the next one awesome. you, gotta be- you did it man that was good a full hour and five minutes that's good okay. yeah thanks so much for sharing your story man thank you guys yeah cool this is uh,